Hey, Ryan from Spiker Workshop here with a quick uh, update video for the suspension on the 1.6 scale Dragon Sherman. Um, I made a few modifications to the previous video and I'm just going to show you um, the new assembly for it. Um, there's a new part now, this little printed part here. And to drill out those two holes we're going to use a 9.64 drill bit. Drill both of those out. And then this part will get glued right here, you can see it. Um, glue it in place there. And um, you still do all the previous steps of putting in the bushings and the uh, epoxy to strengthen it up. And now instead of using threaded rods, I'm going to be using um, standoffs here. And these screws go in the ends of it. Like this screw goes in here, you know, after you put the thing together. Um, watch watch the other suspension video for the rest of the assembly, but use some thread locker in here, and then you know put screws on each end, and that makes it so um, this part can't flex apart because it was it was a little weak before. Also, when you switch from the threaded rods to these, um, the holes are really tight. Um, a one quarter or a one fourth inch drill bit works but you have to like run it through for a while and it'll eventually it'll eventually shave off enough plastic for these to fit in here smoothly um, but it just takes a bit of, of extra drilling to get them rounded out it helps to bevel the edge of this too to help get it through to the other side when you're inserting these pins here you can see it installed here with the screws on each end in that extra piece doesn't affect the scale look too much, but it adds um, strength for it not to be pulled out. And the only thing securing the suspension to the tank are these four screws. The top part of it, I didn't glue. It's just using that this um, this like latch clip that goes on the the top. And you can see um, it still flexes a little bit. But I'm gonna leave it as is and see what it's like once the tank's actually running. But before when you did this with the threaded rods, it would actually pull these things apart, but now it's it's like solid. So when the tank does neutral turns and stuff, um, these things, I don't think it'll be that much of an issue. Um, th there was no easy way to get a bolt through this part right here, so I'm not sure how to reinforce that anymore besides just gluing it to the hull but I'm not going to do that until I see if it needs it. So here I have all my suspension units fitted to the tank. You can see they have the change that I made with the aluminum standoff in here with screws on each side. Um, it makes it so when you do neutral turns um, they're, they're really strong without any other connection up on top. Just the four screws on the bottom there. Because it, it, uh, it makes like a solid unit from here all the way down directly to the hull and directly to those plastic support brackets that I have on the inside. And um, I'm going to quick do a, like a quick um, stress test of just the suspension. Um, I never got around to doing the idler wheel yet, but that's the next thing I'm going to be working on. But just to show you, I have the motors in here and the sprocket stuff. I'm just going to show you the weight of the whole tank so far. So with just that in there, the weight is about 21 pounds. Um, most of that weight actually is my wheels, because I did do what a couple people in the comments suggested. I filled in my wheels to have resin on the inside um, for looks and to make them heavier like people suggested. cases right here um, as additional weight to put on top of the tank and each one of these water cases is like 20 almost 28 pounds so yeah two of them's 55 pounds of weight
Um, and just to show you the like suspension travel and how strong it is moving sideways. So you can see it's still it's nice and smooth with those bushings and the wheels. And then um, the suspension just starts being bottomed out right now. You can see it's still still um, you know at the like the highest point of travel. And this is just with the, the um, stock springs in my suspension upgrade. And then you can see um, when I push the tank, like if it was doing a neutral turn or pull it, that the just that aluminum rod in here keeps the wheels nice and, and sturdy. Um, they have plenty of strength to handle turning. Um, even if I push the tank or pull the tank directly sideways or push it straight, I mean those things are pretty solid. And you can see I'm, I'm pulling on the sprocket and that kind of shows just how much strength the drive shaft or transmission upgrade adds to it. And then, just to show you um, if all the weight is on one wheel here, that it handles it just fine. Like right there, it's bottomed out. So I mean my suspension upgrade is, is pretty pretty strong. So right now the whole tank is like what was that like 70 or 80 pounds almost. Um, to me this is really freaking heavy. I can't imagine it. Um, it, like you're not gonna put 55 pounds of batteries in here, but you could, is what this video is showing. Um, actually let me grab a third one of these cases. One second. So there's three of them on there now. And you can see the suspension just starts... It just starts um, not being fully upright. But you can still see it's actually holding the tank up still. And then let me do some more sideways tests here with additional weight. I mean, even that, the suspension units are handling. And um, obviously you don't need to put this much weight to make the suspension work like this. Um, if you watch my whole suspension video, if you take each spring and cut some coils off, um, it would be, it would handle a lot less weight, but it would have more realistic suspension. You know, if you're not running like 80 pounds on the thing. And um, yeah, I think that, that kind of shows off the actual functionality of that. Let me show you this with the extra weight too. I mean that's like a lot of weight on there and nothing's breaking or anything. This is certainly more weight than I'll be running online. Even pulling that out, all that sideways force on that wheel doesn't seem to have any impact on it. Yeah, obviously I'll have to test it out, you know, once I get the tracks assembled and get the idler wheel designed. Just to show you here the total weight of all those, because I 
forgot what one of them was. Yeah, so that was with 82 pounds of weight on the tank. And then the tank itself is... Yeah, so the entire setup is 104 pounds. Um, the plastic itself would hold more weight if you found more heavy-duty springs. But I, I can't see this tank weighing that much unless you're running like a whole metal upper hull or something. Um, so yeah, I'll make more videos once I get the idler wheel designed and get my tracks on it. I'll, I'll be making videos of it driving around outside um, with these water jugs on it. So yeah, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. And thanks for watching. So here's one more quick test just to show you how strong the actual plastic is on this. Just the stock, um, or the upgrades that I make. Um, Like I'm, I'm about 250 pounds, and the tank itself can handle, like the plastic itself can handle my weight. Um, if you got better upgraded um, shocks on it, yeah, I mean the stuff is as strong as hell. It can almost support my whole weight just on the front or rear side. I don't want to actually break anything. But yeah thing is just strong, super strong.